Everybody who told you that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript was enough has lied to you, myself included. I'm pretty sure I've probably said that in the past. I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds like something I would have said. But in reality, it's not enough. It's just the basics. It's the starting point for anyone who wants to learn web development. And that's it. And yes, there's a lot of stuff that you can build with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But if you're trying to get a job in web development, there's so much more that you're gonna need to learn. And I'm gonna talk about a lot of that stuff in this video. And I'm gonna also give you some tips towards the end of the video to hopefully give you some value from this rather than just discourage you with the first minute of this video telling you why you've wasted your time learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, because you haven't. It's a great starting point, but some of the things that you need to think about are things like dynamic content and dynamic user interfaces and the way that people interact with websites. While most web pages are still just a lot of static data and information, they're also getting more complex. And when you start thinking about web applications, things like Notion and some of these websites that are trackers and planners and things that do a lot of stuff, you can't build that stuff with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You have to have more tools at your disposal. You need to be able to build these things with the proper tools in order for you to have a good functioning website or a web application. Not just dynamic content and user interactions, but when you have real-time data updates, unless you're Wikipedia or Craigslist, you're gonna have to think about these things. You're also gonna have to think about performance and scalability. If you start building a really large website, with just those things and you don't use a framework and you don't use any tools to help you, you're gonna run into problems organizing your code base. The truth is that more likely than not, you're not gonna build a large code base with those things because you're just not gonna be able to. I'm sure there's some mad lad out there that has done it, but the truth is that you're doing yourself a disservice and you're working harder than you need to if you try to just use these tools to build something big and really you kind of can't, or at least you shouldn't. Another limitation is state management. It's almost impossible to manage state with these tools. You need things like state management when you have a lot of user interaction, when you have a lot of data updating, when you have a large code base and you have different components that need to talk to each other and you have different elements and different aspects of your site that need to be updated and communicate with each other. You can't do these things with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's talk about the tools and the essentials and what you'll need to build beyond the basics, the stuff that you need if you wanna overcome the challenges that I just mentioned. Well, the first thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be front-end frameworks and libraries. Things like React, things like Angular, things like Vue, Svelte, Astro. All of these tools make overcoming these challenges a lot easier. They help you with things like component-based architecture. Angular uses a model view controller. There's things like the virtual DOM. They're updated and they're maintained and they're built for the modern web. So that's gonna be the first thing, but there's a lot of other stuff too. Things like module bundlers and builders. A very common one that you're gonna come across is probably gonna be Webpack. These tools will help you with asset bundling, code splitting, and optimization. Then you're gonna have to start learning about package managers like NPM, which is Node Package Manager, or Yarn. These tools help you with managing projects, scripting, dependencies, and versioning. Then as you get deeper into the weeds, you're gonna come across preprocessors and supersets. TypeScript, for instance, is a very popular superset of JavaScript. It adds static types to JavaScript, and it's becoming sort of the industry standard. I personally really like TypeScript. If your IDE is set up to call out some of the errors before you introduce them, it will prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot. It'll prevent you from writing bugs that you may not have noticed because of types not being the same in your code. And it's really nice. I really, really like TypeScript. I've been working in it in a while. And I suggest that you do learn that stuff. And these are all things that you need to learn if you actually want to make yourself a valuable candidate when you start looking for a job because HTML, CSS, and JavaScript just isn't enough. And even if you only wanna focus on front-end development, you're still gonna to have to learn a lot of this stuff. Things like version control. You're gonna to have to learn Git. Every developer should know how to use Git. This will help you save your code. It'll help you with code history tracking. It'll help you with working with teams and collaborating with other developers. And I know we're at the point where it probably feels overwhelming and I'm gonna keep going because there's gonna be things like testing, learn about automated testing, learn about regression testing, learn about smoke testing, learn how to ensure that your code is reliable. And you learn that through testing. I haven't even gotten into APIs. You're gonna to need to understand what APIs are, which is application programming interfaces. God, I hope that's what it stands for. <laughs> Thank you.
You're gonna have to learn about RESTful APIs, which is the most common that you're gonna come across. You might even wanna learn about GraphQL, which is a way that you can query and structure your APIs. Learning about APIs is gonna help you with understanding how to retrieve data, how to manipulate data, how applications communicate with one another, and how you can send data between applications and between your own application, and how you integrate different applications and different services. And then some other things that you can learn about that might start feeling overwhelming is gonna be performance optimization, how to code split, how to lazy load, learn about content delivery networks, CDNs, learn about caching strategies. All this will help you improve your application performance. It'll help you with faster load times and overall it will help you improve user experience. You should also consider dabbling a little bit with security practices, understanding how to implement authentication, what authorization is, what's the difference between authentication and authorization understand how to use tokens and understand things like OAuth or how to use JWT tokens and how to use all of this stuff in order to make your application secure. This is how you protect user data and prevent vulnerabilities. And then you can even learn a little bit about CICD, continuous integration and continuous development. It's very common to use tools like Jenkins when you're working on a software development team because there's a lot of CICD setups. You might not be the one in charge of that because that is more DevOps stuff, but you should at least understand it. You should at least watch a few YouTube videos on this stuff so that you know what it is. And if you really want to get into the weeds of DevOps, you can learn about how to use cloud services to host your web applications like AWS or Netlify or any of the hundreds of cloud hosting services that there are out there. But these are the things that you'll need to learn if you want to push your application out into production or if you want to have different environments that you can test in for production or testing or whatever. I know that by this point in this list, I probably scared most people away, but I really wanted to focus on all of the stuff there is beyond HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because that's not all that you're gonna learn. And anyone who sets out to learn this stuff is gonna eventually come across most of the things that I mentioned in this list. And this list should show you how important it is in this industry to continue to learn and to embrace learning because there's so much stuff that you're gonna have to learn. And I didn't mention all of these things to discourage you. I mentioned that to give you an honest idea of what you're getting yourself into when you set out to learn how to code. And you should be able to embrace that stuff and understand that you learn this stuff little by little. It gets overwhelming when you see a long list like this. It's just like when you look at one of those developer roadmaps and you're just like, how am I gonna learn all of this stuff? And the truth is that most people don't learn this stuff in a short amount of time. It takes a lot of time. In three months, you should have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But in the long term, as you continue to learn, that's when you start picking these things up and make yourself a more well-rounded developer by continuing to learn all of these things and adding them to your skill set and your toolbox. Because the truth is that software development is always evolving. There's always new technologies coming out. And the things that I mentioned in this video might not even be relevant in a few years from now. And there might be a new tool that fixes a problem that we didn't even realize we have that comes out in the near future. And that's why you just have to continue to learn. Also, the continuous learning helps you stay competitive. It helps you kind of have that edge over other people when you add a tool to your toolbox that other developers don't have. It can help you stand out in the job market. It can help you stand out as a better candidate because you have more to offer a company when you have more of these tools that you're familiar with. I promised you guys that I would give you guys some advice, especially for newcomers. And that was my first bit of advice, right? Like embrace the learning. I always say embrace the learning because it really is true. Like you have to be willing to learn this stuff. You have to approach it from a learning mindset and a growth mindset. You can't come in here and be like, oh, it's too much to learn. I'm too dumb. I'm not going to learn all this stuff. The truth is that you start small and that's my first tip. All of these things do start from just learning the basics. You don't have to get overwhelmed at first and take all this information in and just feel like you're never gonna learn it. You just learn it little by little. Start small. Another tip is gonna be focus on the core principles, the core fundamentals, the things that will be transferable to other things. Things like understanding programming paradigms, like object-oriented programming and functional programming. Things like understanding the difference between a relational database or a non-relational database. Things like understanding how the web works, like what HTTP is, what REST is, what the client server model is, what the DOM is, and like what all of these things are. Like when you get an understanding of what these things are, it helps you understand how these tools work to make those things easier. 
And don't be scared to utilize online resources, Google stuff, chat GPT stuff, go on Stack Overflow, find the answer, use all the resources that you need in order to help you learn these things. Watch the videos, read the blog posts, go in there and break stuff and learn. You learn by building, you learn by breaking stuff, you learn by trying to implement these things. And as you build things and as you try to add these tools into the things that you're building, you'll start learning how they work and you'll start learning how to use them. And I think I got a little bit ahead of myself for that last tip that I wanted to give you, but that's really it. You learn by building. The more that you learn, the better you're gonna get at the stuff, the more you'll start retaining this information and the more you'll start to realize when you need to use some of these tools. All of us start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we pick up these things along the way until we're experienced and have dabbled with some of it and learned most of it. And that's just how this stuff goes. So if you're learning how to code and you're just getting started and you're feeling like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript should have been enough, but it wasn't because the truth is it never was. We all have to learn all of these other things along the way. And there's gonna be things that I probably didn't mention on this list that you'll probably have to learn at some point, but that's just how it is. And that's what being a developer is. So hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some insight into some of the things that you need to learn. And hopefully it didn't discourage too many of you by feeling like there's just too much to learn and getting overwhelmed. All right, with all that said, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.